Hey everybody, welcome back to the Chaotic Little Book Corner. My name is Acacia. Today we're doing the top five psychological thrillers that I love. <sighs> Are you guys ready? I'm super ready. Look at this. This is like out of control. This bun is like, I don't want to stay there. And I'm like, mm, I need you to stay there. And it's like, no, no. This is what happens to my hair in heat because it's super thin and fine. So like any amount of heat just makes it go <laughs> flat. A lot. Trust me, after working in a cosmetic company for three years, I know how to get this hair nice and poofy and exciting, but that involves a lot of products. One, don't have the money for it. Two, I hate the feeling of product in my hair. I hate it so much. If you guys actually want to know the top five products I found actually worked when working in cosmetics, let me know, because that I would actually be very willing to do. I still have them because I'm obsessed with them. All right. Top five thrillers. Totally different subject. Let's get back to it. Okay. Carrie by Stephen King. I, first of all, love this cover. I tracked it down because I was absolutely obsessed with it. One of my favorite styles of art is the pop art, so I really, really love it. One of my all-time favorite movies for Christmas time is The Hard Nut, which is a version of the Nutcracker based in like in the 1960s kind of world. So it's all big, bright, bold colors and this kind of style. I absolutely love it. It's just that pop, arty, wonderfulness. It's so good. Carrie is one of the books that really helped me as a child in the age that I was when bullying became really relevant. I can remember, I actually no longer have the copy of Carrie that I used to have because I think first it went for a bathtub day and then it got taken from me a lot um and damaged a lot for those reasons um a lot of kids were not a fan of me but uh it, it went through its heyday and it's probably somewhere in this house but it's it's been through the ringer so I repurchased it and I repurchased it in an edition that I really really loved and it's a very well loved edition as well but it's not as intensely loved if I could get Stephen King to sign this, I'd be a happy camper, but we'll see. Maybe someday I'll see him in the main area, because he does live here, so it's fine. Anyway, that was a huge side note. Carrie is the thing that really got me through the idea of bullying as a child when I was being bullied. It really helped me understand that I wasn't alone, that there was things that could happen to people. Karma kind of came up a lot in my thought process because I was a very nice child to the kids that were really mean to me because I didn't understand that if you're mean to a person who is lesser than you, you can gain popularity. I didn't understand that concept, so I was constantly nice to everybody, including the kids that socially I shouldn't have been nice to, so I... I dropped in rank real quick. <laughs> but Carrie was a very different person from me. She had the religion aspect, which was very, very drastically different from me. She did have the um, conversation with her mother about the dirty pillows. There was an over-sexualized aspect to it. The idea of coming into the womanhood without understanding what was happening. It was an amazing book. I think that Stephen King is brilliant in general. Carrie is one of my all-time favorite books as it goes for a psychological thriller. And I think it's also one of the books that if you told me I could only reread 20, this would be one. Next, I have Bird Box by Josh Mallerman. Mallerman and... Uh, guys, this scared me. I couldn't sleep for a week. It was terrifying. I got to page, let's see, wait, does he have a new book? No, he has a bonus short story. I never got through it. Um, I, this is one of my favorite thrillers. It is. I did only get to 323, so I stopped with about this much left because I stopped being able to leave my house and I stopped being able to get out of bed. I will go back to it again soon in some day later on down the road, but this was incredible, amazing. I don't know the ending yet, but guys, I'll reread this. I have no problem with rereading it and starting it from scratch again because it was so good. This one, don't judge me, you guys, because I really love this. This is Psycho by Robert Blotch. 
this is the book that Psycho, the book movie by Alfred Hitchcock, was based on. I love Hitchcock. I really do. I think Hitchcock films are fantastic and brilliant. And Psycho is one of my favorites. Partially because of the twist that you find out about. It's cool. I, I definitely have a weakness for the twist in this book. But I also have a weakness for the Bates Motel TV show for the same reason. So it's fine. This book I read for the first time before I knew about what the twist was and also before I knew about why I loved the twist so much. So I didn't understand why this felt like such an amazing book to me at the time. But if you've read it, you understand what I'm talking about. The thing about this is I can relate so harsh, except I'm not a monster, terrible human being. So I don't get that part. But I can definitely understand how certain things got twisted to look monster-esque, if that makes sense. Shutter Island by Je Dennis, Dennis Laheen. This is incredible. Same concept as Psycho. I have a problem. All of the, all of the films and movies, that made no sense. All the films and books that I read that I really love definitely hit home for me in certain aspects. And this is no different. This one was an incredible thriller. It's one of the best that I've ever read. It had an, a very different approach to the idea of humanity and person. It takes place in an insane asylum. It is absolutely fantastic. So it takes place on an island for the criminally insane where a gentleman is going there to solve the mystery of a missing person. And it goes from there. If you haven't read this, do it. The Collector by John Fowles. F Fowles. Fowles? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> the Collector by John Fowles. This is dark. Like, messed up, nasty darkness. I probably should not have been reading it when I did because it actually was something I read right at the beginning of my treatment for my disorder of disassociative identity disorder. And so this was a really dark novel that I should not have touched at the time that I did, but I did. And I got so wrapped up in it that I lost myself in here and I felt like I was actually in the room at certain points and actually felt like I was suffering along with the captured, the captured woman. So this is the story of a man who becomes absolutely fascinated and obsessed with a young girl. And the young girl, he becomes so obsessed with her that he kidnaps her to keep her as basically a companion, not sexually, but just a companion because he thinks she's so perfect and wonderful. And it gets weirder and stranger and more twisted. And this, I love this. If you like you, read this. You by Caroline Ke Ke Kepnes read this. This is better. This is the original. This is creepy. This is awesome. I had you. I gave it away because it was too close to that and I could not handle it because it was so much, this is so much better literature than that is. So, okay, I'm good now. Okay. All right, guys, I will see you in my next video. That has been this top five of top five psychological thrillers that I love and I will see you soon.